And welcome to section 8, 7, Factoring Special Cases. So until this section, we've done a lot of work with factoring trinomials. Um, we've learned techniques for when the leading coefficient is 1, and then also techniques for when the leading coefficient is not 1. We've also explored how to factor trinomials that have more than one variable. In this section, we're going to take a look at factoring some special cases of trinomials. And they are special in a way that makes them easier to factor if you're able to recognize the type of trinomial. The objective of this section, to factor perfect square trinomials and the differences of two squares. Lesson vocabulary, perfect square trinomial and difference of two squares. An essential understanding for this section, you can factor some trinomials by reversing the rules for multiplying special case binomials that you learned in lesson 8.4. Consider this problem. The diagram shows two adjacent squares and their areas. In terms of x, how much taller is the left square than the right square? Explain your reasoning. One of the first and most simple things we probably notice right away is that the side length of the smaller square is 5 units. The area of the larger square is x squared plus 14x plus 49, so therefore we need to find, well really the square root of this trinomial, or what value times itself equals this trinomial. So what this results in is factoring the trinomial, but once factored we need to ensure that our two binomials or our two factors match one another. Well, let's give it a shot. First, copy the trinomial. Next, put some parentheses in place as the framework for our factored version. Third, insert a couple of x's for first terms. And then consider the factors of 49 that when added equal 14. Right away, 7 and 7 uh, come to mind. 7 times 7 is 49, and 7 plus 7 is 14. And note that our factored form, which we could check with a quick foil, first, outer, inner, last, x squared plus 7x plus 7 more x's is plus 14x plus 49. Excellent no pun intended. What we notice is that both of our binomials match. We have x plus 7 written twice. Bear in mind that can be written as x plus 7 squared. But that almost gets us off track from the task at hand. This is just something that's going to be valuable in the future. The task at hand was to find the side length of this square and I think we've done it. Each of these sides must be x plus 7 units. Alright, so that gets us very near to the solution, but let's reread the question. In terms of x, how much taller is the left square than the right square? Explain your reasoning. Well, if we have x plus 7 units representing, let's call it the height of this square, and 5 of those x plus 7 are taken up by this much, right, matching the side length of the shorter or smaller square. So if that's 5, and this is x plus 7, well now we just consider what is x plus 7 minus 5. Well, lining up our constants, we still have an x, x plus 2. So our solution is x plus 2 units. Here's the book's example of this problem as well as the book's solution. Um, you can take a moment to check it out. Uh, but the book's answer at the bottom, the side length of the left square is x plus 7 and the side length of the right square is 5. So the left square is x plus 7 minus 5 and that's equal to x plus 2 units taller than the right square. Fantastic. 
Throughout this process, we should recall the rules for finding squares of binomials, right? A plus B squared equals the information at the right. We're more accustomed to seeing A as being an X or a Y variable, and B as being some constant. But regardless, A plus B squared equals A squared plus 2AB plus B squared. Similarly, A minus B squared equals a squared minus 2ab plus b squared. Any trinomial of the form a squared plus 2ab plus b squared or of the form a squared minus 2ab plus b squared is a perfect square trinomial because it's the result of squaring a binomial. You can factor some trinomials by reversing the rules for multiplying special case binomials that you learned in Lesson 8.4. Reading the equations above from right to left gives you rules for factoring perfect square trinomials. What this really means is we're working backwards from what we may be used to. And if you can recognize a trinomial is of a special form, that can make it very easy to factor. Here's how to recognize a perfect square trinomial. The first and the last terms are perfect squares. The middle term is twice the product of one factor from the first term and one factor from the last term. Let's check out problem number one to see just what is meant by that. Factoring a perfect square trinomial. What is the factored form of x squared minus 12x plus 36? So you can check out the book steps here. I'm going to do some work down below and talk through it as I go. So first, rewrite the expression. Um, note the leading coefficient is 1, and there are no common factors. Right? We want to search for common factors and factor those out if they exist. Um, no common factors, so we proceed. Factors of 36 that, when added, equal negative 12. Much as we'd expect in problems like this, our binomials are designed to match. So x minus 6 squared is the proper way to write the factored form of this trinomial. And your first opportunity to show that you have got it in this section. What is the factored form of x squared plus 6x plus 9? Work carefully and make your selection from the choices below. And your second got it question from this section. What is the factored form of x squared minus 14x plus 49? Work carefully and make your selection from the choices below.